Stoke City have always been renowned for their entertaining teams, and three seasons in recent history stand out. We begin with that 1974-75 curtain raiser against champions Leeds United. Richie Mahoney in, tries the shot, left footed, beautiful goal! John Mahoney! one nothing. Really all started by Hudson in midfield. Two passes later, Mahoney onto it, comes past Bremner and ram the left foot. one nothing Stoke. Salmon's facing Lomba, he's passed in. The cross ball and that McKenzie! The ball just got lost down around his ankles, would come to him to get a clean dig at the ball. Mackenzie then with a half chance of getting the equaliser. Richie on for Greeno. Richie goes again, little chip is wanted! Tremendous bit of reaction goalkeeping then by Dave Harvey. Just managed to fingertip that one over the bar. Neat bit of working by the two Stoke strikers. John Ritchie did it all right. The little chip aimed to lob it over Harvey's head and the goalkeeper reacted quickly. Just over the bar. Anyway, the corner to Stoke. Salmons takes it. Cherry a little bit wrong-footed as he jumped, but he uh, saved the day by knocking it behind for another corner. He's green off. Cherry looking to see where he is, hands on hips. As he galvanizes himself into action again. Is this second corner from Sounds? Harvey took that well. Beautiful. And it's Lorimer breaking out for Leeds. The long one for McKenzie. Trying to guide it towards Bremner. It didn't come off for him. And goes on the outside. Gets Cooper. Now has a goal. Aiming for Richie and McQueen was too tall. Kenzie back for Maitley. Now Giles. Bremner getting it in the back from Salmons. These on a defeat. Salmons, Hudson, Greenough, Salmons, a little lucky to get that one back again, might as well go all the way, hasn't got the ball, Giles and Lorimer, well that's played Giles into trouble, now they get a corner out of it, and as the grave got it, and the local boy draws up the cheers of the fans, getting the corner off this wily veteran, number 10, Johnny Giles. Hudson to loop it in there. Oh, well taken, Harvey. Right at the feet of John Ritchie. The ball put there by the twisting header of Greenock. Cooper comes out. Maidley. Mackenzie. Tackle from behind by Dog. Giles to take it. Cooper. Cooper taking on Marsh. And Asselgrave. Madeley now. Did well to swing that back. Dog puts it behind to the corner. That ball looked as though it'd be getting away from Madeley. Corner on the left. Dog. Number 10, Hudson. On the far post, Mickey Pechik. The near post, John Marsh. Bremner to take the corner himself. He can dig these things onto the near post. See what he does. Out by Simmons. Giles. Smith getting half a touch. Now for Lorimer. McQueen's up there. And Mahoney knocks it for another corner. And 
Leeds exerting the pressure again, getting to get, getting to grips with this game, looking for an equaliser. Bremner with this corner, McQueen up on the goal line. Madeley in the box, McKenzie's in there. Cherry. And a diving header then by Cherry, was so close to getting a, an equaliser. Defender Cherry has to go back down the field again because all that happens is it's a goal kick to Stoke. taking lots of time over this goal kick about six minutes to go leads the champions losing one nothing here at Stoke Greener Hawk with him Mahoney Hazelgrave caught then by Maybury Cooper Giles Giles having an outstanding game giving this ball away Hudson has to slow it down because there's not much support up there. Sammons takes over. Again, he slows it down. Pechik for Hudson. And now Stoke do have the men forward. Hasenbridge, one of them, a touch then for Greenock. And a deflection. A deflection took it away from Dave Harvey, but it's 2 0 His satisfaction that the ball goes in the net. The break then coming from the left side. Hazelrad knocking it forward. Greenock placing his shot hard and a strong, solid deflection. I think from Cherry. Took it away from Dave Harvey. It's 2 0 Stoke. So now the champions really have had it. They've got four minutes to get back in this game. Mackenzie. So Brian Clough's first appearance as manager of Leeds in a league match. Looks as to it's not going to be a happy day. Mackenzie. Lorimer. Giles. Free kick finally to start. Jackie Marsh to take it. Well, the crowd wanting another goal from Stoke now. I think we said earlier that the three three games that Stoke have won here on their own ground. Against Leeds have all been scored by three goals, and as Greenock charging in, Greeny is there first. The last two occasions it's been 3-2. Back in 67-68, it was 3-0. It's 2-0 to Stoke. As Cooper takes it for Leeds. Jordan. Jordan, who uh, hasn't had too much luck in this game. Replacing uh, Clark, Jones, whichever one you, you care to pick out. And Hudson breaks. The support on his right is from Richie. He's got to watch the offside, that's all. Wasn't quite long enough for Richie. He's in with the shot and he is 3 0. We wanted that third goal and we got it. John Richie as the crown erupts. Well, I think that was sheer tiredness by Leeds. But let Hudson in down the middle of the park. The knock ball of John Richie and this veteran, superb striker, knocks in goal number three for Stoke. Arriving here, having beaten Leeds United this season, Stoke last Saturday at the Victoria Ground. Queen's Park Rangers at Ellen Road, and here they go with a tremendous shot there by the number eight, Don Gibbons. To Hazelgrave. And now Smith. Salmons. Challenged by Clement Unfair. Stokes at his free kick. And now Petrick. 
Green off. Pedging again. really going in there ferociously to try and keep possession for Stoke and now it's come to Salmons. There's a nice little cross by him, Mancini almost into his own net. Skimming that crossbar by no more than a couple of inches. Skills there by Hudson, finding his man superbly there and there's the cross from Hazelgrave. Hurst on the far side, trying desperately to get ahead to it. Mancini to Pedgick. Salmons again and Pedgick linking up again well and a tremendous shot into the side netting by the uh, Stoke number three. Coming forward uh, at a real rate of knots there, Pedrick. Crossed in once more to Jeff Hurst. Now Mahoney. And now for Hurst again, onto that right foot. There was a deflection there and Parks had to go down. That could have been very dangerous. It's a result, a goal is draw, that Stoke would be well pleased with. I mean, two points would be even better, and that's what they're looking for at this moment as Sammons takes it up the cross in for Hurst! Oh, Jeff Hurst! What a beautiful goal! What a beautiful goal by Hurst. Well, a long, challenging run down the left there by Sammons, and as he crossed it in, guided in superbly there by Jeff Hurst. from uh, Marsh, not really appreciated by the Rangers fans, who I think would uh, prefer the Stoke got on with it. Hurst head up, and he's all right now, Greenoff, is that number two? Beautifully saved by Parks, that should have been number two. Beautifully timed run ball, what a soup header there, superb header there by Jeff Hurst, setting Greenoff free. That could have been and should have been number two. And takes Gallagher for another trot. Hudson. Mahoney. Robertson. And he'll win a corner off Archie Styles. corner of the game and then Salmons who's gone out there to take it Moore's in the box Roberts Greenoff Page got a kill Hatton facing his own goal looked in trouble Styles out Salmons Skills aiming for Robertson, gets it on for Greenoff. That looks useful. That's a good one. What a goal! Jimmy Greenoff. One nothing Stoke. 15 minutes gone, and that is a goal that Jimmy Greenoff will remember for a long, long time. So superbly struck. The ball knocked forward to him, just about the edge of the box. He chests it down in one fluid movement. Turns, pivots, and whack! Far left corner of the net. Latchford, no chance. So much was first. Greenoff. Greenoff gets it in the back twice, in fact. Hudson takes it quickly, on for Moores. Might try one. Did scores number two. Now that's a way to take a free kick. Referee Q having given the foul. Ian Moore's cash in on it. 28 minutes into this first half, and Stoke take a 2 0 lead. Greenoff brought down from behind. Hudson takes the free kick very quickly, straight through to Moore's, makes a narrow angle for himself, fires the shot in off the left hand post, and it's 2 0 Stoke. Stoke then. Kendall for Taylor. There's no width on the far side. Salmons then for Stoke. 
Good ball. Pause. Certainly a busy side, Stoke. Energetic. Fast moving side. That was Page from Greenoff. Page coming from North Wales. I don't think the South Wales linesman would thoroughly understand him. So Salmons and uh, Hudson sort out what they're Tactics are going to be here. That was a beauty from Jimmy Greenoff. It's 3-9. And Jimmy Greenoff, captain of Stoke, former Birmingham player, really punished Birmingham for some very slack marking then. 36 minutes of this first half gone and a, a tremendous lead for Stoke now. So that's two free kicks given against Greenoff. Well, Greenoff was fouled and it produced goals. That one, Salmon takes it. Beautiful header from Greenoff. The uh, mid-70s was certainly a golden era for Stoke City and you must have many fond memories. I think they're all fond memories all the time I spent at Stoke City anyway, but uh, obviously round about that, uh, the 72 and me actually leaving uh, Stoke were all good memories and... Uh, I think we provided some entertaining, entertaining football for the supporters, which they do appreciate at Stoke. What do you actually recall about signing for Stoke? Uh, I was just so happy to get back into the first division. Uh, what I do remember most was I was so impressed with Tony Waddington and uh, it was proved right. And of course that uh, big season in the first division was very memorable indeed, 74-75, when you got off to a, a perfect start against Leeds United. That's right, the team of the uh, decade, uh, well, them and Liverpool. And uh, to start off 3-0, obviously, our hopes were high for that season. Now, no one would have imagined you'd beat Leeds United 3-0. They'd won the First Division Championship by five clear points, a real formidable force. 33,000 people were here at the Victoria Ground, and it was some occasion. Do you rem remember much about the game? I remember that we did. Uh, we played them off the park. We thoroughly, thoroughly deserved the victory. And, uh, like I said, I think we felt that we could go on and win the league that year. And of course, you scored a goal, didn't you, too? Yeah, and always nice to score against one of your ex-teams, yes. Uh, it, does do it does start the season off uh, correctly for you, especially for a striker. It was a good season for you. You went on to score, well, certainly 14 league goals and one or two in the Cup as well. And uh, perhaps it was a good basis for Stoke to, to build on and uh, maybe, in hindsight, they could have had more success as a result of that year. Yes, I think so. I think what, what really happened that year at the end of the season was that we'd never been there for, well, most of them hadn't been there up at the top when it came to the crunch, the final few matches, and I don't think we knew how to handle it. Well, Jimmy, you had a flying start, and Birmingham City were perhaps formidable opponents in December uh, when you actually get it on the score sheet once again. That's right, we were really playing well at the time. Um, Alan Hudson and myself were kind of... Uh, keeping the ball away from the opposition most of the time. Uh, we were on, really on song, the pair of us. And uh, that day, obviously, it was a bit of a local derby. Now we're down the motorway, but it was, it was looked upon as a derby. A good test for us coming round Christmas. Uh, we went there and we beat them 3-0. Uh, I managed to score two, Ian Moore's got one. And then I had to come off after half an hour with a broken nose. Right, so that's certainly a game you won't forget. No, the, I think the thing was then we had, the next game was Leeds United away and I couldn't play in that, and we were top of the league at the time, and it had been nice to go to Leeds and beat them there, and unfortunately we got beat. Jimmy, let's concentrate on some of the players you've had the pleasure to play alongside. Uh, you've just mentioned Alan Hudson. Uh, he must have been a delight to, uh, to play alongside. Yeah, marvellous. Uh, I'd been waiting for someone like him. Uh, I mean, I had it a little bit, obviously, with George Eastman and Peter Dobie, but he was the player that I've been looking for all my career to play with, and uh, it was an absolute joy to play with him. Why did he make it so easy? What were his qualities? His qualities were, and it's, it might sound strange, but we used to play with his eyes. We didn't kind of run into a space, and then uh, the ball was released to myself. The ball used to be in the space before I got there. We knew where one another were going to be. Alan Hudson really could have made more of his career. It's probably a shame he didn't fulfil it even further. That's right, but I think at that time there was a lot of people like your Rodney Marshes, your Tony Currys, your Duncan McKenzies, and they weren't um, given enough 
chances in the uh, national side, whereas nowadays Gascoigne's come, he's the joker and the reveling in it. And uh, Alan was one of those, and equally as good, well, better than Gascoigne. You'd say he was actually oh, a better player? Yeah, definitely. No problem. Hudson. Greenhoff. Aiming for Mahoney, picked him up well. Doyle stays there. Now Hudson. Made a little space for himself. Good attack. That's it. Moors. Air Moors. Air Moors makes it 1 0. With about 30 seconds to go to half time. And brings the Stoke fans up to their feet. That was a beautifully constructed goal. Credit to Ian Moores for finishing it off, but look back on the build-up with side and the cross ball, absolutely slide rule accurate. And Moores knocks in his third goal of the season. Donicky down for Bell. Hudson wins it back. Donicky again. Donicky not positive about uh, what he was planning to do in that situation. Hudson then, aiming green off. Hudson away from Donaghy. Moore's back for Hudson. Too much. He did, he did it. He's McRae, it did not seem possible that he could squeeze that ball past Keith McRae, but he did. It's 2-0. That's what the Stoke fans think about it. Well, Alan Hudson set up the first goal for Moores this afternoon. It's certainly poetic justice that he should get the second. Started the whole thing off at the right side of the box. It looked as though the chance had gone away from him. One little shimmy one way, the small gap, and he squeezed it in past McRae's fingers and the post. Hartford. Chased by Hudson. Goes for Royal. Hewitt. Taken out so easily. Stewart didn't love it. Salmon's breaking now for Stoke. Hurst out to the left. Moores and Greenoff in the middle. Oh, beautiful. Moores gets his second goal. That really was superb. 37 minutes into the second half. It's 3 0 Stoke. Ian Moores has scored his second goal of the game. That means he's doubled his score previous, previous to this match today. Takes him on to four. The Jeff Hurst cross again, inch perfect for the diving Ian Moores to put his head to the ball and knock it past McRae, who was completely skinned. Marsh there. with a sort of lazy looping gait. Whacked it with the left peg. Well off target. Could have had himself the thrill of a hat-trick then. Dennis Smith galloping forward. And Moores is off again. On for Hurst. Could this be the fourth? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Number four. Jeff Hurst. 41 minutes into the second half. Stoke are really putting it across this Manchester City side and those spectators are enjoying every minute of it. That move started off by centre-half Smith, carried on by Ian Moores, who might have gone on his own for a hat-trick, but decides to give it to Hurst. And Jeff Hurst doesn't miss those. Short for Hinton. And Dodd gets it away. Thomas will try one. Oh, that's Hector. And he was played on. Hector, four minutes into the second half, breaks the deadlock. Kevin Hector breaks his run of unhappiness, his games without scoring, seven in a row, and now he scores the vital goal here. That ball knocked back in, and Hector found himself played onside. It was an easy job to beat Shilton then. 
Roger Davis. Davis with Hinton to his left. Now Davis scurries back into the box. Trying to get on the end of this. And he did too. Riach! Oh, that was an incredible let off. That Stokes struggle on again. Salmon's cutting out. Hudson. Now Hurst. Salmons. And Daniel does the interception. Now it's Hudson. Good ball, Salmons. Far post is Greenock. And it's 1-1. One, one. What a fine goal. And a magnificent goal by Jimmy Greenock. All worked out by Hudson and Salmons. A little back flick from Hudson. Salmons deep for the far post. Greenock unmarked. A slashing right foot shot. And 1-1 one, one the score. Well, that is a, a super way to get back into this game for Stoke. Just as the sun came out to shine and sparkle and glisten on this muddy field. But now it's Gemmo Vidali. Took a deflection. Almost sees Shilton trying to change his mind in midair. But committed himself. Then he saw the deflection and tried to change. Nish. It's Dodd. Now Hudson. Moores. Hudson. Green off. Hudson's gone on again. Beautiful ball for him. Hurst is in the box. Hurst in there. And it's scooped over as Thomas got the tackle in on him. What a tremendous tackle that was. Hudson indicating that uh, Hurst was fouled there. Moore saying that he was fouled. Beautiful break up by uh, Stoke. Lovely build up. Hudson's cross, Hurst under it with Thomas and over the bar. Hinton way up in the air. Gemmel's under this. Dodd, well, it's a good job Smith was there and not one of the Derby strikers. And Hudson then for Stoke. Salmons. Once this uh, partnership, this understanding between Hudson and Salmons, which has been so effective in Stoke this season, didn't come off. A one by Dodd. Put up by Hector, free kick to Stoke. Hudson will take it. Don't put Smith forward. And Thomas didn't know that Smith was there. Salmons, Greenoff, yes! What a beautiful goal! What a cracker! Two pointers. That really was quite magnificent. All coming about through the error in the Derby defence. Smith coming away to Rob Bolton. Salmon's knocking that ball in, a magnificent diving leap by Jimmy Greenoff into an unguarded net, or unguarded by the goalkeeper. Folk heroes Jimmy Greenhoff and Alan Hudson helped Stoke City to finish fifth in that never-to-be-forgotten season. But following the disappointment of relegation two seasons later, we take up the action in their glorious promotion year of 1979. Wins a throw in of Richards. Throw in which uh, Richardson will take. Four step. Good length on it. Stubbs gets it out. And a shot on the turn and a goal! Sammy Irvin! Oh! Well, there's a shot for you. One minute and 48 seconds on our watch, and Sammy Irvin. His seventh goal of the season sticks Stoke in front.
That long throw coming in from Richardson. Half cleared by Stubbs. I think it was Scott got the touch back. And Irvin, quick as a rattlesnake, buries it with his left foot. Not a particularly good run. Picked up Masson. But Crooks is there. Now Kendall did very well. Irvine, good ball. Crooks. Space to run. O'Brien coming back at him. And missed him. Crooks nicely off for Kendall. The ball across the box for Irvine. Oh! What a beautifully constructed piece of football, though. Irvine and Kendall combining perfectly down this right side. And Kendall a dream of a ball across the box. Irvine striking it superbly. McManus no chance, and it was wide of his post. Randall, half a man at his back. Stops him. Now here's Crooks. Kendall gets in there. Oh, and a shot now from Randall. By golly, he drove that one. Stubbs got in the way of it. Well, that was a beautiful ball through from Crooks to Kendall. Uh, I think McManus rode his luck a little bit in stopping the shot. But clearly, the second shot from Irvine was on, from uh, Randall was on its way until Stubbs got there. Winter and McDoyle is there. Man, the last man. Did well under pressure. Irvine. No, the ball not out. Here's Randall. Drives it. Ooh, and he wasn't so very far away. That would have brought the house down. Sally Irvine, the little chase down the line. And the ball is transferred into Paul Randall. Had himself a dip, and he wasn't so far away from the post. Callahan was there, and so was Mann. He has given tremendous cover to this Knox County defence. Jeff Scott. O'Brien's under this. Oh, he lost it to Crooks. Has Crooks done too much? Richardson. O'Callaghan. Goal. Brian O'Callaghan makes it 2-0. 35 minutes of the second half gone. And that's a bitter blow for Jimmy Cyril and Notts County. They were doing so well. O'Brien losing the ball on what looked like a fairly simple clearance. It dropped for Crooks. He looked as though he'd dallied too long. Then he drowns lost it for a moment Randall not very far off Dennis Smith back on the field now to resume his place in the middle of the Stoke defence that's a good header by O'Callaghan Randall a chance and a goal 14 minutes gone. Brendan O'Callaghan winning that ball and threading it through, giving a chance to Paul Randall. Picks his spot beautifully there to put Stoke one up. Swinger. There it is for O'Callaghan again, beaten by Dwyer. Scott. And he set the post well indeed. Jeff Scott moving up in support of that corner kick as the ball comes out to him hits it left footed John Davis leaves it go as it is Scott and in acres of space here Paul Randall Phil Dwyer caught way out of position as O'Callaghan on the far post and away by Dwyer Paul Randall getting acres of space on that left hand side of the field as Dwyer rushed in shot himself when perhaps he might have crossed to O'Callaghan but Dwyer was there anyway to clear off the line That's Irvine's ball. Chance for O'Callaghan. He's turned the defence and he's got a second. Sammy Irvine. 
questing onto that loose ball, threading it through. O'Callaghan turning the Cardiff City defence, getting his shot in left-footed. And just about a minute before half-time. Buchanan with it. Deep one for Roberts and Pontin. Moore. out at all Gary Moore from that corner getting the ball on the right hand side of the area trying to turn the slow defence pushed down by Jeff Scott and referee Mr Bates in no trouble no doubt at all a penalty which John Buchanan is coming up to take for Cardiff <laughs> so up that's for O'Callaghan Randall and Crooks 3-1, Crooks. Richardson's in-swinging corner from the left-hand side of the field. Smith getting there, up from centre-half. Stoke having a couple of bites before Crooks nips in. Peter, in the promotion year 78-79, you were still striving to make a mark in the Stoke side, and you got just one opportunity, but literally grasped it with both hands. Yeah, we uh, we had a good reserve team, I remember, pushing the, we were pushing the first team, boys, uh, and Roger Jones got injured, I think, I think he had a bad knee, and I played down here against Wrexham. Uh, we beat them 2-0. So a dream debut, really, for you? Yeah, I remember the game very well because Wrexham weren't a bad team. They had Alfred Griffiths and uh, Joey Jones were playing and uh, obviously it was a game we had to win. It was fairly early in the season when it was up there, uh, but the lads were magnificent, you know, Smithy and Howard Kendall and that, and uh, yeah, I remember the game very well. Yes, uh, Dennis Smith, Howard Kendall, some all-time greats there, really. Um, what, what about Howard Kendall in particular, an influence in the midfield? Class, that, that's just the one word, class. Uh, we used to watch him and in training he was a good trainer but on the pitch he, he seemed to be so much better than the players that were on and around him I mean he was thinking so well and, and his passing and that and also he's a very good motivator and organiser I mean he was one, one heck of a good signing for this club So it was no surprise to you when Howard became such a great manager really? No, because he uh, he manages like he plays, he likes good team spirit, plenty of commitment and enjoying the football and that's how the teams that he manages, uh, that's how they play. Another Stoke City player from that era who's also made a successful manager is Dennis Smith. Dennis Smith, yeah, he was uh, the man that I used to change next to uh, when I first came to Stoke and uh, he put me into a lot of very good habits and I mean the... He was fantastic. He gave everything for the club. I mean, I've seen him playing out here, you know, on one leg, wouldn't come off injured, you know, and he would come and stand on the wing, you know, we'd used our substitutes up, I remember, and uh, he just stood on the left wing just so that somebody would have to mark him. I mean, his commitment and that. And some of his goals, some vital goals he scored for the club with his diving headers and that. Right, now that promotion season was also a springboard for one Garth Crooks, who went on to enjoy a lot of success himself from the Victoria Group. Yes, Garth, I remember, always worked at his game and his finishing. Uh, possibly the best I've worked with in my time at finishing. Left, right foot and headers. I mean, and he would say, Foxy, you know, he'd come and do some finishing with me and I would go in the goal and, and he was always practising and he was a very good finisher. OK, so Stoke did make it to the first division, but only just because it was a very close run thing at the end of the day. Uh, Crystal Palace were promoted as champions. Brighton was second above Stoke on goal difference, but Stoke only just made it by virtue of one point from Sunderland. Oh, yeah, I remember that day at Notts County. Uh, we thought a draw would be enough. We didn't think Sunderland would win. And we got we heard that Sunderland had scored and we were winning. And I was in the stands and all of a sudden, with about two or three minutes to go, Alan Durban got up out of the box and uh, was saying to the lads, come on, we've got to win this game, we've got to win this game. And um, uh, the lads got forward and scored a classic goal. Paul Randall got to the byline, pulled over a great cross. Big Bren at the far post, headed it back, and Paul Richardson came in to score. And plenty of celebrations. Fantastic, because I, I can still see the picture now of all those Stoke fans uh, behind the goal where it went in, and they were delighted. 21,000 at Meadow Lane that day. Was there really? Yeah. I, I didn't realise that. Most of them Stoke supporters, I'm sure. There was a heck of a lot of Stoke fans there. Fantastic scenes at the end. Oh, 
Back in the first division in 1982, Stoke City were entertaining fans everywhere with the emerging talents of Mark Chamberlain and Peter Fox, allied with the guile and experience of internationals such as Dave Watson and Mickey Thomas. And that's a good one to Chamberlain. I'm pretty anxious to get him the ball to have a run. McElroy on his right is parking. Thomas is getting into the penalty area. That's Tyson. Oh, Thomas is there. And that was an error at the back by Ipswich. And Thomas picks up a ball that should really have been clear. Well, this cross coming over from Derek Parkin should really have been Tyson's. He leaps and doesn't really judge it right. Now, it's knocked on quickly to Thomas and a nudge, and Civil had no chance. 1 0. Bracewell. McElroy wants it. Curling one round to Chamberlain. Against Mills. Forward, here's a nice ball to McElroy. And there it is. Maguire. Paul Maguire. And the player who made it was definitely Chamberlain. And his run through the middle. Well beaten there, no blame on him. Well, look at Chamberlain. He didn't hang on to it, he just poked it through, no marking there on McElroy, comfortable square ball, Paul Maguire, side foot, and that's 2-0. And Stoke played away well. Paul Bracewell on his left is Mickey Thomas, draws a defender, here's Chamberlain, all brought down on the edge of the area, just inside, appeals from the Stoke players. Good lead by Butcher. McElroy, Barged off it by Walk, and away goes Brazil. He's onside. There's a chance here for Ipswich. Brazil. Very well done. Some of the hardest chances of all. But he made it look much simpler than it really was. One against one. There's no target to hit, but he's passed him. Beats the stretching hand, and in with a right foot. So, Ipswich pull one back. It's falling over. But keeping the ball, that's the main thing. Mills. Here's Walk. Oh, great goal. Wonderfully done. Well, that was a good position, but it was a terrific ball from Mills. Picking him out there. Then there was an awkward ball to control. He looked at his box and closed it down, but he stabbed it past him, deflected into the top corner. 2-2. Two -two. Well, Callaghan and Butcher challenge in there. In comes Osman. Time for Derek Parkin. And Callaghan. Bracewell's done well. Diving challenge there. Bracewell goes down. A few arms go up and a penalty is given. It's civil. Maguire's already scored once from the spot this season. Oh, Civil almost got it. It was a good dive, but nevertheless, it's a goal. There it is again near post. O'Callaghan again winning it. Clements away and a goal from Watson. Via pursued by Bracewell. He's won it too. Now Maguire away. Support from O'Callaghan and Chamberlain in the area. And also from McElroy. Oh, what a goal from McElroy. Now there are plenty of memories certainly from that first division campaign, but perhaps the best game of all, or the most exciting game of all, was that 4-4 draw against Luton Town. Yeah, both playing uh, good attacking football at the time and, uh, you know, the TV got the, the right game that day. Uh, we both played well and uh, I think Derek Parkin ended up playing a goal that day and they missed a the penalty in the last minute, which is quite exciting. Well, Brendan O'Callaghan made his mark in the game against Luton with a goal. Uh, big defender George Berry got two and Paul Bracewell got the other. Can you recall anything? 
Well, obviously, uh, myself in that game, I ended up having six stitches in the knee going off and coming back on. And uh, obviously, you know, that time it was 1 0 when I went off, and it was 2 1 to them when I came back on. Uh, it was one of those games that, you know, everyone looks back on. And, and I mean, I remember that for a long time because it was exciting. Everything was, you know, goals going in and everything. Goalkeeper getting sent off Peter Fox. It was one of those games that, you know, it was a pleasure to play in. And the fans from both sides, you know, give a, a round of applause as the, both teams came off. Now, the sending off of Peter Fox was a controversial incident. Yeah, it what, was what do you make of it? It was at the time. I remember it. Uh, I've watched the video since, and I thought he was very unlucky to get sent off. But a referee uh, has a decision to make, and uh, he felt that Peter uh, deserved to go. And uh, there was a lot of sendings off that year, as you remember. And, uh, you know, obviously it caused a lot of problems in the game, but uh, we battled on and we got a result in the end. Mickey Stoke finished 13th in the first division that season. Uh, not a bad points return, really. 57 points from those 42 games. Uh, there must have been some other fair players worth a mention, apart from Brendan O'Callaghan. Oh, obviously he had the, the, the great Sammy Macro. You know, he was a pleasure to play with. Paul Bracewell up and coming became a big star in the end. And uh, as you said, we had Foxy in goal. He's still here today. Derek Park in that year, you know, he played a couple of seasons. Big Dave Watson was a fabulous defender. You know, it was a nice blend of experience and youth at the time. And uh, we played attractive football that year and we, we battered teams that came to Stoke City. Let's just concentrate briefly on Sammy McElroy. Uh, you play, paid a, a quick tribute to him there as being a great player. He certainly was and must have really run the show and made a big impact. Uh, for ability-wise, he was a fabulous player and, uh, you know, he gave everyone that lift because he's played at the top at Man United for so many years and he put his uh, experience and skills to Stoke City and the public you know appreciated what he did for Stoke City that year. And of course Squire then with the corner. Chamberlain oh! and it's there, it's gone in. George Berry has scored. A scramble in the area and George Berry has done it again. Kisses to the crowd, he scored on the opening day of the season here. And now he's put Stoke in front, there's the corner, floated over. Headed on first by Chamberlain, Judge just managing to keep the ball out, it comes off the bar in fact. And there's George Berry to not hit the simplest of goals. Ten minutes gone and Stoke are in front after what has been, without any doubt at all, a very, very positive start to this match. George Berry, got a free, uh, free transfer for Wolves. Certainly his game has been rekindled by the move. Now Thomas for Stoke. O'Callaghan well forward. This is Maguire. McElroy's gone forward too. Still Maguire. Bracewell. Came off Donaghy. This is Thomas. A shot from uh, Paul Bracewell. Thomas looking for O'Callaghan at the front post. Close could you get? Brendan O'Callaghan, who's so lethal in the air, climbing there at the far post. The ball floated over from Thomas, out jumping the defender, and it's just wide. Now here's Stevens. Way by Berry. Maguire. Donaghy. Walsh again. didn't seem on but Paul Walsh strikes the ball so beautifully he must have been 20 25 yards out he just looked up and well that is some shooting turns away for the marker and that's gloriously driven past Peter Fox so 20 minutes gone and Luton are right back in this match They've certainly had as much of the play so far I don't think anyone can have any complaints about the scoreline 1-1 it stands now, and this is some match. There's Paul Walsh, his fourth goal of the season. And Stoker coming straight back. Chamberlain for O'Callaghan. Just away for a corner. My good year. These two teams really are entertaining this afternoon. Let's see what they try here. Maguire. There's O'Callaghan. Back across the goal. Just headed away by Wade Turner for a corner. You have the impression in this match so far that almost every time there's an attack, there's a chance of a goal at either end. It's been that sort of game. The referee just making sure that the ball is in the right position. 
the corner then from Maguire. Up goes O'Callaghan. Hit it away. Chamberlain. Immediately confronted by two defenders. He find a way through. Berry! Quite remarkable. Ford Berry has done it again. Well, he didn't score all that many goals for Wolves to George Berry. But that's his third now for Stoke City. Chamberlain again, the provider. Here he is, faced by two defenders. There didn't seem to be a way through, but he found one. He turned from one foot over them with his right. And up goes Berry. The goalkeeper perhaps rather misjudging the cross and Berry knocking it in. Watson with Steen. Steen backing into Dave Watson. Walsh is going through. Fox in trouble. Did he handle it? Walsh. And the referee has given the free kick. The Luton players can't believe it. And they're furious. Certainly Peter Fox handled the ball outside the area. And the referee had already blown for the free kick. Just look at the annoyance of the faces of the Luton players. Walsh made the most of the confusion. Tucked the ball away comfortably. And Luton are now coming across to uh, come over the linesman, as indeed is Gilbert Natfine. Well, I wonder what will happen now. The free kick stands. Well, that's got to be a big disappointment. And I think that is going to be a booking. It is, indeed it is for Peter Fox, who sprinted out of his area and handled the ball. The referee had already blown for the free kick. Next to the chagrin, and in fact, he's been sent off. As we see the incident here again. He's lost the ball. In goes Walsh, grappling for it. He's handled it. The referee had obviously blown the whistle then. On goes Walsh. Takes it so well. Marvellous piece of finishing. Paul Bracewell is the man taking over in goal Hill great kick now for Luton this is David Moss Steen up to in for Steen <laughs> glorious finishing by Brian Steen Richie Barker the Stoke manager at half time Derek Parkin has now taken over in goal and Paul Bracewell has resumed his place in midfield again this is strength of course in the air Dave Watson so it is for this man O'Callaghan and finds Chamberlain look at the speed here chance it's gone in it was Bracewell who got the final header in and although the defender tried to clear the ball off the line I think it was Stevens who went in and here Chamberlain again setting up the chance creating havoc now on that right side. Judge on the fumbling the ball, the header from Bracewell. There's Stevens trying to keep the ball out. Couldn't do so. So just four minutes into the second half. And Stoke have gone back in the lead again for the third time in this match. And it really has been splendid fair. 3-2 for Bracewell with his first goal of the season. Here's Berry. Two goals already this afternoon. Good header by Stevens. Finds Ricky Hill. There's Hill again. To Steen. The turn from Hill. Finds Steen again. Still Steen. Well, would you credit it? What a match this is turning out to be. That's two now for Brian Steen. The goals continue to flow. Chamberlain to Maguire. Now David Moss. Put out by McElroy. Here's Moss again. 
to Steen. In the way was George Berry. And there's danger whenever Brian Steen gets the ball. That's the thing about this match, there's so many potential goal scorers on the field. Here's another one, Ricky Hill to Horton. Strange goal that one was. Mel Donachy. Another stoke throw. Berry. Challenged by Antich. Most in trouble. Hampton knocking it down. This is O'Callaghan. <laughs> Superbly struck goal by Brendan O'Callaghan. And it's 4-4. Four, four. I've seen some remarkable league games over the years, but this one, you know, is going to take some beating. Eight goals, and there's another one struck it by Brendan O'Callaghan. He took it so well. 38 minutes into the second half, Brendan O'Callaghan's third goal of the season. And this afternoon takes up believing. Who's to say that the game has finished yet? Well, not me for one. Here's Chamberlain. Now. What can he do here? McCallaghan calling for it inside it. Chamberlain still ploughing his way through. Too many defenders in the end. They've told him to run at defenders. If he's forced inside, go on. Well, now Brian Steen is going on for Luke. And Titch is joining him. Still Steen. Surely a penalty, it has to be. Brought down. No doubt at all that Brian Steen was tumbled there, I think by McCautry. The substitute, there's Steen, clearly brought down as he runs into the area. McCautry indeed the offender. Mostyn against Parkin. Hits the post and cleared away. Well, I find it hard to believe all this, you know. Great names, great games, great goals. Stoke City have provided them all over the years. And you, the fans, requested to see those games again. We hope you enjoyed the action.